So we're nearing the halfway point of 2020, and now is a great time to be buying a new laptop. And as you can see in front of me, there's a ton of great options out there in each of their individual categories. So I'm gonna break it down from cheap stuff that you can bring to college with you to powerful gaming machines and hit everything in between and saving my overall best pick for best laptop towards the very end of the video. So hopefully by the end of this, you should have a really good place to start for going out there and buying your next laptop. First, let's start with the best college laptop. And this is important because a lot of people are looking to get a new laptop who are going into school for the first time, who need something reliable that's gonna get them through the four years. And I think a great option is the MacBook Air. This is a great laptop for college students in particular because it starts at just $899 and that's a discount just for students. And what you're getting is all those Apple trademarks, like the really great build quality, the high resolution screen, and the great typing experience. This is a solid option that's gonna be reliable to get you through those four years of school or even as a nice kind of entry level into the MacBook lineup. Now, if you're looking at spending a couple hundred dollars less than that, and that's where a lot of people are shopping for laptops, I would recommend the Acer Swift 3. It might not look like anything special on the surface, but underneath it has an AMD Ryzen 4000 processor. That might not mean anything to you, but in terms of actual performance, what you're getting here is eight cores, and that's gonna equal a lot more performance power than the Intel version of really any laptop at this price. So if you're on a budget, but still wanna be able to run some content creation applications or really just anything heavy, the Acer Swift 3 really does give an incredible value. It's just $650, and even though you're not getting the best screen or the best touchpad experience, what you are getting is a ton of performance for what you're paying. As an alternative to the Swift 3, I'd also recommend the Lenovo Yoga C640. And that's a great option if performance really isn't as important to you, but instead you're more interested in a thin and light design that looks really modern and sleek. And then one last option in this same price point is the Pixelbook Go. This is by far my favorite Chromebook. It gets excellent battery life and it's a great option for people on a budget. Before we move on to some more high-end premium machines, let's talk about the best two-in-one laptop you can buy, which is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7. This is a device that's made to be used either as a tablet or a laptop, but this is a laptop list here, and I think this is the kind of device that works best as a laptop replacement. That doesn't mean the tablet functionality is like complete throwaway. It's definitely something you can use. It's great for watching videos or while you're cooking, propping up a recipe that you're looking for, things like that. The Surface Pro 7 is really, really good at. Now I know what you're thinking, an iPad Pro and a Magic Keyboard could also work really well for a similar solution, and totally. And what you're gonna get there is a much better tablet experience with a way more robust ecosystem of apps. That's just not existent in Windows 10 as it is today. However, what you're getting here is the better laptop experience. So best two-in-one laptop is still gonna go to the Surface Pro 7. Next up, let's talk about the best gaming laptop. Now, obviously this is a huge category and we could make a video just on gaming laptops alone, but for now I'm gonna pick out my favorite, which is the Razer Blade. This has been my favorite gaming laptop for years and it's primarily because of its design. It's really unlike any other gaming laptop out there because it doesn't scream gaming. And I know some people are gonna be into that and some people aren't, but for me, the Razer Blade really is the happy balance of great design, great performance, and in a laptop that you could actually use for other things in your life other than just gaming. Now it starts at $1,600 and you can go crazy all the way up to an RTX 2080 Super, you can get an OLED 4K touchscreen, you can get the 300 Hertz refresh rate, bunch of different options for specking this thing out to be exactly what you want it to be. And it can be a very expensive laptop, but I think regardless of what you choose in terms of configurations, the Razer Blade is gonna look like the Razer Blade, which is really what makes it a standout in this category. Now, as an aside, if performance really is what you care about, and that's really what matters in gaming, I'd recommend something like this, the Dell G5 SE. There's also the Zephyrus G14. These are both Ryzen-based systems that have great gaming performance at a really low price. So as an alternative to those really fancy, you know, razor blades out there, these are also really great options. Next up, let's talk about the best content creation laptops. And this is tricky, right? Because really what we're talking about is performance in specific apps, whether you're a graphic designer or a video editor, 
really you're gonna need a different setup to best utilize those applications. And we're not gonna hit all of those today, but I do wanna talk about the two primary ones, photo editing and video editing. Now for photo editing, really what you're looking for in a laptop is one that has a really high resolution screen that's really color precise and the best option in that case is the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It also happens to have really great CPU performance, better than a lot of 13 inch laptops in this similar size. So the 13 inch MacBook Pro is a great photo editing machine. Just make sure you get the $1799 version. For video editing, I think your best option is the Dell XPS 15 because you have great CPU and that discrete GPU performance. And what you're getting here is up to eight cores and 16 threads on a great 4K panel. I mean, this is really an expensive premium machine that's gonna do really well, whether you're working in Premiere or After Effects, working with big resolutions, high quality codecs, all that kind of stuff. Just make sure you opt for those high core count configurations when you're buying your laptop. Now, one caveat about the XPS 15 is that the Core i9 technically is not available quite yet to purchase, but it will be soon. And the other caveat is that the XPS 17 is actually coming soon as well, and that comes with a beefier GPU that should make those renders even faster. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. My pick for the overall best laptop of 2020, it's the Dell XPS 13. Now, if you've been following this channel for very long, you probably know that this has been our pick for the best laptop for many years, and that's for a reason. Dell just continues to pump out a new upgrade of this every year, and it just keeps getting better. And I'm telling you, in 2020 though, it really has hit this peak where they've refined and tweaked the formula enough where it just feels like they've perfected the XPS 13. But the reason why I call the XPS 13 the best overall laptop is because I think this is the laptop that fits best for the most amount of people. I really think everything from the typing experience to the screen to the battery life, the CPU performance is really good. It's in a really, really small package. It just hits every one of those things that I think most people are looking for in a laptop. This isn't the cheapest laptop in the world and it certainly isn't the most powerful either, but I think the XPS 13 sits in that middle ground where most people's computing needs really are. And for that purpose, it's the best laptop you can buy. Thanks for watching this video. These were the best laptops you can buy in 2020. But of course, I'm sure you have one that I missed. So make sure to leave it in the comments below and make sure to give this video a like and a subscribe to the channel for more content from Digital Trends.